this is a pretty involved equation that we need to solve. And when we get down to the bottom of it, you're going to find that there's no solution. So I want you to see what something like that's going to look like. Because so far, everything that we've done, we've done has had um, an integer answer or a fraction as an answer, a rational number. We still follow the same principles that we've been using, so let's clear the parentheses. So here, please don't take 11 minus 4 and get 7. That's not what you're supposed to do. You never subtract first. Order of operations says to multiply the negative 4 times x and get a negative 4x. And a negative 4 times 1 is a negative 4. Just be careful with your multiplication in your head, even. So there's the left-hand side, and we'll collect our like terms in a minute. Let's bring down this 11. And then we're going to take a positive 2 times a positive 4 and get a positive 8 here. And 2 times a minus 2 is a minus 4x. That's done. That 16 is just a lone constant. It's not got the parentheses around it. Let's now collect our like terms. So I'm going to bring this negative 4x down. But 11 minus 4 is 7. Minus 3 is 4. So I went ahead and worked left to right and kept those values in my head. Again, 11 minus 4 is 7, and 7 minus 3 is 4. Over here, we've got our like terms. We've got an 11 and an 8. They'll add to be 19. And then when we subtract 16, we'll get 3. So you can work left to right and get those values in your head. So I have that negative 4x. I want to check this one more time. 11 plus 8 is 19 minus 16 is 3. And I look at this and I go, gee, when can you ever find a number that in one case you can multiply negative 4 times that number and add 4 to it, and in the other case also multiply a negative 4 times that number but only add 3 to it? The left side has the same term um, in terms of a variable term, but it adds 4 in one case and adds 3 in the other case. And that, there's no way to ever find a solution for that. But let's say you didn't notice it. What I would probably do next is I would add 4x to both sides of the equation, and all of a sudden I'd start getting nervous because I'd say, oh, I was trying to isolate the variable x, and I lost the variable x totally. Um, it's gone. And on top of that, I have a statement that is not true. The number 4 does not equal the number 3, and I've lost the variable. This problem has no solution. I could have stopped right here because I noticed that. Um, and that's all you need to state for me, is that it does not have a solution. Finally, let's look, look at one last problem that's got some decimals in it, because I'd like to share with you a trick um, to work with decimals, because who likes to add and subtract decimal numbers? Um, so let's go ahead and look at that problem. I just thought of, of one other point, too. In the problem that we just did, if I had gotten down to that, oh, fourth or fifth stage, and I didn't have 4x, let's see, I think it was a negative 4x plus 4 and a negative 4x, if I had the very same thing, in that problem, I had a plus 4 and then a plus 3. But if I had the very same thing on both sides, maybe I didn't notice it, and I added 4x to both sides, and I got this statement. You know, 4 equals 4 is a true statement. And even go back up here and notice that anything will work for x. Because if you're always taking a negative 4 times a number and adding 4, and then on the right side, the same thing, then you have many solutions. Um, you would say for me, or all real numbers work in that equation. So a couple of ways to state that. So two scenarios can occur. You can have no solutions, or you can have many solutions. So watch for that. Okay, fine. Last problem. While you don't have to do what I'm going to ask you to do right now, I think it's much easier whenever you have decimals in a problem to clear the whole equation of the decimals. And so um, because this problem has numbers in the hundredths place, 1.03, that's in the hundredths place. The 2 is in the hundredths place, the hundredths place, the hundredths place. I'm going to multiply, I'm going to put a big parenthesis and just kind of a little 
multiply both sides of this equation by 100. Because the farthest position in terms of a decimal value is in the hundreds place. So when I multiply 1.03 by 100, I just move the decimal place two places to the right and I get 103. And when I multiply 0.62 by 100, I get 62. And when I multiply 0.71 by 100, I get 71. And when I multiply 0.22 by 100, I get 22. Oh man, it is so much easier working with whole numbers in my opinion. I'm going to add 62x to both sides of this equation. And let me see, that would be equal to 40, a positive 40x. And I'll bring this 71 down, don't lose it. Those add to be nothing and bring your 103 down. I'm trying to isolate the variable x, so I'm going to subtract 71 from both sides of this equation. And so let's see, that would be 32 equals, and over here I'd have a 40x. And finally I use the multiplication principle, which is to divide both sides by 40. I kind of keep this drawn out so you can keep your equal sign right in the center and be doing the same things to both sides of the equation. And then don't forget to reduce this. 8 goes into here 4 times and 8 goes into here 5 times. So it looks like my solution for x is um, 4 over 5. That's the last problem that I'd like to share with you in terms of solving equations. We started out very simply in the very beginning by just adding and subtracting something from both sides of an equation to isolate the variable x. Then we went to the multiplication property, which said let's divide both sides by the same thing, or let's multiply both sides by the reciprocal to isolate or get the variable alone. And then we got very involved um, adding something to both sides, subtracting something from both sides, sometimes clearing parentheses. Um, so uh, the big thing that you need to remember is that balance scale. What you do to one side, you must do to the other side, and your goal is to get that variable x alone.